Do you want to know how to create art like you see above? Well, I'm going to show you. Hi, I am Stefan. I represent Animated Space. I'm a tech artist and I create stylized art for games. Now we shall begin. To begin, this video will be broken down into four parts. Concepts and referencing, meaning how I guided the reference and inspiration for the project, how I modeled the project, how I textured the project, and how I rendered it in unity with the shaders that I needed to create. We're now in the concept and references section. The first step was creating a tune-based character. And this was done through a rough sketch, as you can see on my computer right here. I hand drew this and then I scanned it into Photoshop. The next step was I did another simple sketch. So as to figure out how the logo would look. I also made sure I got it a bunch of references to determine the look that I wanted to go for with it. As you can see right here, this is how the book would look from the back. These are some of the stickers ideas that I had. And here is like how I came up with the back head on the pencils. So we're done the concept and references stage of the video and now we shall move on to the modeling stages. First off, to start, all of the modeling was done in Blender given that is my go-to program for modeling. I opened Blender and I started off by creating a plane and it was then subdivided with multiple loop cuts so as to create the basic shape. After creating the basic shape and the needed subdivides, the next step was to add some insets. The inset tool allows you to take the currently selected faces and create an inset of them. This makes it easier to know where the holes are going to be. Please make sure to add ample subdivision to create clean holes. With the necessary subdivision, the squares were then spearized so as to turn them into circles. Once the circles were created, the faces were then dissolved using the dissolve tool. This tool was used here instead of deleting as I found that the dissolve tool removes the needed geometry and fills the surrounding geometry perfectly. Using the delete tool will just delete everything, leaving unnecessary holes for me to fill it. The clean holes are completed plus the shape is perfect. So now I'm gonna extrude the plane and turn it into a solid. You don't have to extrude this way. Another way is to use the solidify modifier. I just find this easier for me as I'm not a heavy user of modifiers unless they are needed. After getting into a solid, I beveled the edges to get the round shape needed. Now that it's beveled, let's connect the needed edges. Great, the edges are connected. I will now duplicate the top section, extrude it, and create the upper part of the base mesh. After creating the base mesh, the next step is to work on creating the pages. To create this, a curve modifier was used. Yes, this is one of the few times I actually use a modifier. Firstly, create a curve and then change the anchor points into the desired shape you require. A simpler way of doing this, in my opinion, is setting up multiple blender screens at different views. By doing this, you'll be able to see the curve at different angles and it is now possible to get the shape you require faster. Once you're done, make sure to link the page to the curve in object mode and you're done. Okay, so now that we have that, what I'm going to do next is duplicate the page. Because as you can see in the logo example, there are three pages. So we need to make three instances of the page. To make the duplicates of the page, just press Shift D. Now that the pages are done, 
we can focus on creating the rings for the top of the base mesh. I created one ring in object mode and then duplicated it until I got the required amount. Make sure to duplicate it as an instance. This makes it possible that if any changes are made to one of the rings, it will affect all of the rings. It also makes it easier when you reach the unwrapping stages as you can just layer them. For the lettering, the first step is to create a text layer in object mode. After creating the text layer, the spacing was modified to the accurate dimensions. Once this was perfect, it was changed to the chosen typeface needed. When it comes to choosing typefaces, please make sure the typeface used is the ideal format for the project you are creating. What I mean is, if this is a free project, please use open source typefaces as these can be ideal. Once this is done, change the text to a mesh and get rid of the unneeded vertices by merging the vertices using the merge by distance function and then using a decimator. After decimating, add a shrink wrap modifier to the text and make the target the page. After the shrink modifier is done, add a solidify modifier so as to give it the depth needed. Collapse the modifiers in object mode and push back the text so it connects with the page. After that, add a boolean. To do this, select the page as the main object, add boolean, make the text a secondary object and click union, then you're done. It's time to create the arms. For step one, we're gonna create a circular hole where the arm is gonna be attached to the body. To construct this hole, add multiple loop cuts to the specific area where you want the arm to be. Afterwards, select the polygons created by the loop cuts and spearize it like we did in the past. Also dissolve it like we did in the past. To create the other hole needed for the other arm, you can follow the aforementioned steps or use the mirror tool. I personally find the mirror tool is easier as it takes less time. Now we shall move on to the head. First, create a cube in object mode, then resize it adequately to meet your needs. Next, insert the needed faces at the front and extrude it inward. Afterwards, extrude the top, bottom, and side polygon sections of the head evenly and then bevel the needed extruded sides so as to get the shape needed. We'll be extruding the top as well as the left and right sides of the head piece. Now that this is done, we scale and extrude the back of the mesh as necessary and then bevel it. One thing I learned with this project is proper smoothing is your best friend. It can take your project from looking mediocre to the next level easily. For the rest of the head, we'll do a time lapse starting now. Get the curve shade for the face, add the necessary loop cuts and then bevel the interior. Once all of this is complete, subdivide the bottom mesh and spearize the hole where the arm section of the base mesh will be merged. Once the hole in the base mesh is completed, duplicate it. The duplicated mesh will be used to create the arm. This duplication was done to make sure it can easily be attached to the base. Now tweak it into the required shape. In my case, this was a robot style arm with lots of cut and insets, so this was easy. Another inspiration, and this is a throwback, is Dark Cloud 2 for the PlayStation because the main character had a mech and I loved how they designed the arms and the body for him. After you get it into the required shape, go to object mode, create a curve modifier and make sure it lines up with the hole. Finally, add an array modifier so as to create the duplicates needed and then merge it by distance so as to join them. Make sure the array modifier is on top or it won't work. Once all of that is done, collapse it. I'm going to use some familiar techniques to create the container slash shell which is being hoisted on the back of the base mesh. First, duplicate the mesh, then subdivide the duplicated section. If you want a bigger or a smaller container, please make sure to click the right amount of polygons that works for you. Once that is done, spearize and dissolve that section. 
Short Keys for Spirits is Alt Shift S. Familiarizing yourself with short keys can make the world of a difference in a project. It can also speed up deficiency. When I used to click and access the menu, I found it took twice as long to do things. Which could be super tedious in the long run. Yeah, let me know your opinions on that. And for the rest of the container slash outer shell, I'm going to do a time lapse video and I'll be back when I'm starting to work on the pencil. Okay, we're back and for the pencil what i did was i duplicated the bottom of the container shrank it and then extruded the mesh outward to get the base of the pencil following that i merged the bottom polys and extruded where the lead for the pencil will be another set of extruding was done to create the pencil base this was extruded at a 45 degree angle as the pencil was going to hang at that angle within the cup after that, I added some loop cuts to create the metallic holder for the rubber. Then I resized it to separate the rubber section from the body. Finally, I beveled the edge of the rubber and finished the pencil. The head holder will be the next step. This began by creating a cube using Shift A in object mode. Then it was split through the middle by using a loop cut. Subdivisions was also done at the bottom so as to create the needed edges to spearize and join it to the rest of the mesh. Wait, there's some extra vertices at the side. Let's delete them now and continue. Now that they're deleted, let's add some loop cuts and then let's bevel the sides so as to create the curved nature of the bottom. Select the needed vertices as we are going to do an extrude. Once these are selected, Extrude the faces upwards and make an inset in the bottom to create the hole needed. Afterwards, we create a bevel at the top so as to create the curve needed for the face holder. B. Bevel is completed. Now let's resize it a bit and add some insets where the holes are going to be. Okay, that's complete. We can spearize it. Once it's spearized, shrink the circles. Make sure they're in the center and then delete the faces. Now we can move on to another piece. Create two UV spares and rotate the exterior one at a 45 angle. Make sure to leave the interior one where it is. Now that's done, we'll isolate it and make this the only visible object. Here, this makes it easier to work on. Okay, let's reshape it a bit to get the ideal look we need. Hmm, looks good. Now let's rotate it to 15 degrees as we need it at an angle for it to work in the project. Once that is done, we can delete the faces. Uh, rotate the head a bit so as to get it into the eye socket perfectly. This may take some time. To complete the eyes, we will extrude the retina and extrude the eyelid. Once done, duplicate the final version as we need two eyes for the project. Now that I see the finished version, it looks like Swayze from Monster Farm. You know, the one-eyed character. Wow. To 
create the body for the eyes, the Bezier curve method we used earlier was utilized here. The Bezier curve was wrapped around the pencil until we got the desired shape. What this means is the Bezier curve was wrapped around the pencil and then it was linked to the eye that we created earlier. Then an array modifier was utilized to link the Bezier curve to the cube that was created. Make sure to add enough loop cuts so as it can bend around the Bezier curve. Please make sure to use the merge by distance function to join all of the cubes together and to make delete the extra vertices. This will help with polycone. Once this is done, we will start bridging the head and the body together. Now that it is merged into one cohesive unit, we will duplicate it to get the back heads. You will have to play around with it a little bit to get it into the right position. Once this is done, we'll start working on the head while the eye. To create the eyes, we will duplicate the inner mesh of the eyelids, then select the edges, add some loop cuts, and spearize it to the size that you want to make the eyes right for you. Now extrude the faces to create the retina. One thing I've learned during this project is that I'm using the same techniques over and over, and once you master a few basic techniques, you can use them multiple ways. Okay, we can delete the unneeded faces, resize it a bit, add an inset, and then we're pretty much done this part of the video. Yup, it's definitely done. So for texturing, these steps are very important. Make sure you ideally color code how you want the textures to show up in Substance Painter. For example, I use three color code as I'm using three 1K maps in Substance. Once I did that, I went to File, and then I exported as a FBX. I did limit the active collection. For object types, I removed all this, just click mesh. Uh, geometry, everything is okay. Make sure to apply modifiers, stuff like that. Click export and you're done. Yup, we are definitely done and I'm happy with the outcome. Now we can move on to texturing. This will be done in Substance Paint as it's my go-to texturing software. Okay, I'm in Substance Painter right now. And the first step is to bake the mesh after importing it. The mesh maps are now baked and now we can move on to texturing the layers. First thing I did was to create the actual base layers, the flat layers. That's why you see the fill layers with the green and stuff like that, just to block out the object. After doing that, I added some gradients so as to get the blend that I needed with it in substance can see around the eye areas we did that around the short form the front paper stuff like that this handwriting was used because i felt like it gives it a flair that would appeal to the intended audience the handwriting was created the same way as i did the stickers and now i'll show you the process so as you can create both easily as you can see here, are the raw files of the back sticker textures I developed in Photoshop. They take the shape of a cloud, a flame character, a jet, lightning, and different style emojis. The files were then exported in a PSD format, meaning for the alpha, you make the background black and the object white. For the texture, you make the background transparent. And then after doing that, I imported the resources here. What else did I do on this project? Hmm. Oh yeah, generators. 
If you look at this particular area, you'll see a lot of curvature. This was done through creating a curvature map. The way I went about doing this was... Step one, add a fill layer. We'll add one right here temporarily. Step two, add a black mask on top of it. After you add a black mask, I added a generator. And you can see the list of generators right here. In certain aspects of the mesh, using a generator was not the ideal feature. To overcome this, I had to use other techniques. For example, hand painting. If you look here, the metal on the side is hand painted to get the look. Another area I hand painted was the rubber. So as to get the dirty, grungy looking texture we needed. Surprisingly, this process was not tedious at all and it took little to no time to get it done. To create the cute eyes, these are hand painted. This is just me adding shadows and lights in these particular areas to get the desired appearance. That's pretty much what I did on the texturing side and now we can move on to Unity. We're now in Unity and this section will focus on the basic lighting, shading and the post-processing techniques. To focus on these techniques, the first thing I did was create a new project right here. I then changed the project name to what I needed it to be and then I made it a URP project. The reason I chose URPR, one, I personally find it way easier when it comes to lighting stylized objects. Two, with HDRP, the lighting is more realistic. So if you're doing more realism and stuff of that nature, then HDRP works better. So I set it to URP, found the file location of where I wanted it to go, and then I created the file. Once the URP is created, we'll import the project. To import this project, right click, then click import new asset and go to where the file is located. When it's imported, you'll see this. These are the parts right here and all the textures from Unity will be located right here. With the textures imported and applied, we can now create the background gradient that you see here. That's the tint of green. To do that, I created a gradient in Photoshop. It's this right here, as you can see. And then I imported it into Unity. So I'm in Unity. I go to import new asset. It's right here. I import the file. And then I change it from 2D to cube. Apply and that's it. And then I just drag it here and then it's done. The next step was I set up a point light, a spotlight, and a directional light. For that, these are the settings I use for the directional light. These are the settings I use for the spotlight, the point light, sorry. And this is what I use for the spotlight. To create the look that you're seeing here, a custom tune shader was created using Shader Graph. And also edge detection was done as well using Shader Graph. To apply the edge detection, a uh, custom forward renderer was added. I would like to thank Ned Makes Games for his help with the custom renderer and the toon shader. The only key difference between his and mine is how I applied the normal maps within Shader Graph. Post-processing effects were also done to this project. I added some volume, bloom, and color adjustments. Let me show you the effects of these features. So let me unclick the volume, bloom, and color adjustments. I will then add them back and you will see they helped with the ambience of the project. Now that everything is complete, I'd like to thank each and every one for watching this video. And if you need anything, please reach out at Animated Space. Thanks.